Taylor Swift, the Eras Tour movie is in theaters nationwide. Man, I remember 1989. No, actually, the year 1989. I remember it. Hello, everybody, and welcome to my recap of what I'm calling my experience with Taylor Swift, The Eras Tour, because this is much more of a movie experience than a movie that you're meant to sit passively and just enjoy silently in a dark room. It's about dancing and singing and trading bracelets and all the things that you do at a concert. The Eras Tour movie is from veteran concert film director Sam Wrench and is being distributed by AMC in both their theaters and other theaters. Now, when it comes to Taylor Swift, I would say that I enjoy the music of hers that I've heard, which is usually confined to the bigger hits. I sort of absorb Taylor Swift through cultural osmosis. And I had heard of the Eras Tour. I heard about the ticket sales and everything, and people were having trouble buying their tickets and they were too expensive. But I'd also heard that the Eras Tour was very well received by her fans. I'd seen some people that I know in LA that had gone to some of these very shows that are in the movie. And so when they announced that there was going to be a movie of the Eras Tour, I was intrigued on a few different fronts. I wanted to see what this concert looked like because I'd heard so much about it from people that had gone. I wanted to see what this theatrical experience was going to be like because I am always in search of a new theatrical experience. And also, like I said, I like a lot of the Taylor Swift songs that I'd heard, so I figured, well, I'll hear some good music as well. Now, one thing I was a little bit worried about was feeling out of place because, you know, I am not the face that you would think of when you would think of the target audience to go see the Taylor Swift concert in theaters on opening night and to sort of compound that I had to fly solo because Mara had to leave town so it was just me I wasn't the problem but it was just me at the concert by myself and I have to say that I only had one negative experience as far as you know this face showing up to the Taylor Swift movie and it wasn't from anybody that was in the audience it wasn't from any of the Taylor Swift fans it was actually from the people that were working at the movie theater because they have the little you know counter where you go and I have my app and you can scan the ticket and so I'm walking up with my phone and the person that's working the counter says oh are you here to see Taylor Swift and I was like yeah actually I am and the person just kind of like laughs and like shakes their head and looks at the person there that's also working the counter because I guess you need two to man this thing. And they're like, man, I was hoping he'd say no. And the other person was like, yeah, me too. And in my head, I was like, really? I mean, first of all, I'm there to review the movie. I, I would have seen this, I think, anyway, but probably not, you know, six o'clock on opening night. I wanted to see what this experience was like. But secondly, even if I wasn't there to review it, even if I was just me showing up to see the Taylor Swift concert, what's so wrong with that? I mean, is it really necessary to laugh at and sort of like shame somebody who's there to see Taylor Swift, especially if you're working at the theater, and you know, I, I didn't honestly just feel like making it a big deal. I just sort of said whatever and walked away. But it's like, first of all, you could definitely get fired for that. But also, just in general, like, why even just do that personally? Like, why try to shame somebody for liking what they like or make them feel like they shouldn't be there? Because that's sort of what I felt as as far as the energy from this concert and, and sort of the energy that it seems like Taylor Swift exudes as an artist is this idea that anybody is welcome. Whoever wants to come to one of these shows, as long as you're there and you wanna have fun, then that's where you should be. And that was the energy I, I definitely got from the audience. The environment inside the theater was actually very positive, a lot of excitement. There were some people that were trading uh, friendship bracelets, which I'd read was a thing that people do at Taylor Swift concerts. And that was brought over uh, to the movie you know, before it started. But everybody pretty much as soon as the lights went down they all kind of scattered and and it was it was kind of funny because you know it was stadium seating but you can kind of see the rows in front of you and there was a row of younger fans that were in front of me and as soon as the countdown clock started on the concert literally everybody leans forward in their seats like that you could see just the anticipation you could feel the anticipation and then a lot of people including the row in front of me like 10 minutes into the show they all kind of fled down to the front of the theater where there's like you know if you walk in in some theaters on either side there's kind of a landing uh, at the floor level before you start going up for stadium seating they all kind of assembled there like it was an actual concert and so I thought that, that was really fun because these were people that probably, you know, didn't get a chance to see. Most people, I think, going to see this movie didn't get a chance to see the Taylor Swift concert. And it was almost like they were able to put themselves there 
in that place, even though it was just playing on a movie screen. And what I loved was that because you're going through the different albums or the different eras of Taylor Swift, for a lot of the songs, especially the earlier songs, it looked like the people that had brought some of the younger fans were up and dancing to those songs as well. And so you had different pockets of people that were, you know, dancing to different songs. But generally throughout the movie, there was lots of dancing, there was lots of applause, there was lots of singing, there was lots of clapping, which I think is great. And there were a lot of people, and I mentioned this on the channel a couple times that said, oh, Dan, you're going to hate it because the audience is going to be so loud during this movie. And I get that. Like, I understand that. And I was expecting that. And that's kind of the experience that I was hoping. I wanted to feel what that energy was going to be like from the people in the theater. I think with a movie, the appropriate audience response is whatever the movie intends that response to be. So for example, the Rocky Horror Picture Show, I wouldn't go to a screening of that movie and expect people to sit silently and watch the film. If I go see The Godfather, then yes, I'm going to have a different set of expectations. And this is very much a movie that you could tell one of the audience to be clapping and singing like they were there at the concert. And there was really just something kind of wholesome about seeing that much enthusiasm because the Eras tour, as far as where I am here in Arkansas, the closest it was to here was four or five hours away. And that's if you could get tickets, which so many people had trouble doing. So I, I think that there were so many people in my specific audience that not only weren't able to make it to the tour, but they could never go. It was just geographically not possible. It was financially not possible. And so here, they really get the next best thing. And I think that that's sort of what works about this movie as far as a concept in a genuine way. It's great that an artist is giving their fans the chance to see this show that very few people statistically would be able to see. Millions more people can now see this concert in theaters. And then in a financial way, in a dollars and cents way, well, yes, there is a financial incentive because this movie's going to make a lot of money. But I don't really think that Taylor Swift needs money necessarily off of a billion dollar plus tour and that's just this tour. I just think that it's great that that experience has been immortalized and translated and fans can go back and revisit it. I'm sure there will be some sort of a streaming release or a physical media release. And I actually kind of like this trend because this has now been uh, recorded in a very high quality format. And then things like Hamilton, when Disney released the theatrical recording of Hamilton with the original cast in the theater, that's also great to have immortalized. And so I actually hope that this does start a trend. And I hope that more shows, not just concerts, but also Broadway shows, live events move toward this because it allows people to see it and it provides a record. Whereas before we really haven't had any record of live performances like this. When looking at the movie itself, kind of separating the experience from the film, I think as a concert movie that it was well shot. I thought it was very well edited. It, it definitely wasn't a bells and whistles edit necessarily. It was pretty much just a documentary look at what this concert was like for the live audience in Los Angeles. And one thing especially, and it was something that I was impressed by throughout the show and I, and I key in on, is stagecraft. I did drama tech, technical theater in high school, so those are always things that I'm looking for. It's the reason why I I love live theater. I just like the way that you're able to pull these things off and it's sort of like magic, but for real, like in real time. And even things like the LED screens on the stage. There was one particular part where Taylor Swift is walking on the stage and she steps and the stage cracks. And that's such an impressive marriage of technology and choreography because you have to hit your mark as an artist and her backup dancers did it as well. There were a couple numbers where they have to be in the exact right place for the lights to interact with them. And I loved the design and the stagecraft and the different things, the lighting effects. I thought that that was really, really well done. So Swift's objective, if you don't know, and the reason it's called the Eras Tour, is that each section of the show is a different era or a different album in her career. And it was interesting because, you know, I don't really know the names of most of Taylor Swift's albums. So certain names would pop up and the audience would just go, ah, you know, would just go crazy around me. And I'm like, oh, well, this one must be one that the folks like. I'm most familiar with 1989 and its numerous singles, but I also found that I knew some songs from Fearless, Reputation, Red, a couple from Midnight's, and I heard a few new songs that I really enjoyed. A couple standouts were uh, 22, which I really liked, and then Vigilante Shit, which I really liked. And also, by the way, speaking of profanity, I'm pretty sure they got a little bit of a break from the MPA because this movie had as many F-bombs as I've heard in a PG-13 movie, I think there was just a little bit of leeway cut to not give it that R rating because they knew that the core audience really 
would be completely left out if this movie were rated R. I will say not being a hardcore Taylor Swift fan and at the risk of invoking the wrath of the Swifties that the movie did take a little bit of a dip as it transitions into the last third and I think a lot of it is when she goes into the folklore era. It's beautiful music but as somebody who wasn't really familiar with that music and it didn't hold a lot of personal meaning to me, again, just because it was the first time I'd heard it, that was the only time that I was really aware that I'd been sitting in the theater as long as I had. That was around the time the movie was crossing the two-hour mark, but it quickly picks back up again, and it really just rockets you into this big finale. And so while there was that lull, it didn't really necessarily kill the momentum of the movie because you get thrown right back into it, and I, I really quite enjoyed the last... 45 or 50 minutes or so. This is actually the most that I've ever listened to Taylor Swift's music in one sitting, all at one time. And I began to really understand as I listened to it, both her popularity and also why there seemed to perhaps be so many people that are looking to tear her down. Across all of her different eras or albums, I think that Taylor Swift is very consistent in who she is and her messaging and what she's getting across, the tone and tenor, even if the musical style changes, I feel like a lot of it is still very true to the general feelings that she is expressing through her music. As an artist who's writing about love, whether it's based on her real life or not based on her real life, she's really the only one who knows where the lines are blurred there, she captures a lot of what other people have captured in that general area, the idea of heartache or the idea of revenge on the person that's wronged you. That's pretty common in music. But what I think is unique about Taylor Swift is that she doesn't seek to absolve herself of blame while also not being afraid to pass judgment. And I think that that's something that a lot of music fans aren't used to. They're used to a certain kind of love song, which is sort of like the heartbroken lament or the he done me wrong revenge fantasy. And when you listen to Taylor Swift's music, it's kind of both. In addition, and perhaps now more so than ever, Swift's persona exudes confidence, empowerment, and an attitude that says that she doesn't really care what you think. She knows that you're coming for her and she's already moved past it. Her demeanor says that your criticisms of her are your problem, not her problem. And she also won't fit neatly into a box. She's not the squeaky teen pop idol. She maybe went through a brief phase of that. She's not the hyper-sexualized object that some people want to put female pop stars into. She is uniquely Taylor Swift. If you cross her in some way, then you could be written into a song that millions of people are gonna memorize and they're gonna sing for decades. If she loves you, she can write a song about you. If she hates you, she could write a song about you. If she loved you and you gave her reason to hate you, she will almost definitely write a song about it and it'll be catchy as hell. By showcasing her entire career or parts of it on this tour, I think that she obviously gave her fans a lot of their favorite music over the years, but I think it was also a way to show people like myself who have heard maybe the hits or the bigger songs a little bit more of who she is. And you can see her evolution as an artist and the messaging that stays the same and some of the stuff that changes over the course of all these different songs. And really what I see is a desire to play by her own rules. And that's won her a lot of fans, I think for that reason, and a lot of detractors for the same reason. But she only really cares about one of those groups. And I really honestly do think that she cares about her fans. I know that it seems like every artist does, but it seems like she actually does. And I also like that she gave her backup dancers and her backup vocalists and the band a moment at the end of the show to take the spotlight. The fans and the people that do the show with her are the ones who matter, it seems to me. And the detractors really are just fuel for her creative fire. Obviously, I think the level of your Taylor Swift fandom is going to affect how much you like this movie. For me, a somewhat casual Taylor Swift fan who is really impressed by the show that she put on in this movie, I'm going to give it a solid It's Good rating. I think that if you are a Taylor Swift mega fan, it is 100% going to be a See It Now rating if you haven't already seen it. It could even be See It a Second Time. And if you don't like Taylor Swift, well then, really, why are you going? Why are you wasting your time? Overall, I think it is a really fun experience, and it's why I'm glad I did go on opening night, because the movie will be the movie 
forever. Like what's on film will always be the same. What changes is the different audiences that see the film. And I was glad that I could see it in such an enthusiastic audience and an audience that appreciated the movie. Again, it brought out so much joy and people had such a good time. I think that that is something that I hope that artists appreciate, the fact that they can make these things that make people so happy. It is a rare gift. It is a rare talent. And I think that a lot of people this weekend are going to appreciate the Taylor Swift have decided to share that talent, not just with the people that could fill arenas around the country and around the world, but also the people that could fill the movie theaters as well. So that's my recap of my Taylor Swift experience. What did you think? Did you go to the theaters and check it out this weekend? Did you have a big, fun, crazy audience? Or did you just decide to skip it altogether? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching me here on the channel. I'll be back early next week with a look at the box office for the Eras Tour. Did it cross $100 million? The early results look pretty positive, but we'll see where the final numbers come in, as well as movie news reviews and more. Until then, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.